Hey guys, I pray you're blessed today. Just wanted to come on here and talk to you all for a couple of minutes about some things. You know, um, guys, things are really escalating. You know, I don't give detailed news reports. But things are really heating up. Some great fo channels to follow who not only share the news but the gospel are Lisa Boyce from Watch Woman 65, Chris from Raps Global Rapture Watchers, and Brother Adam from Watchmen Adam News. They are phenomenal news stations. And there are others too. So please feel free to share them in the comment section. Things are coming to a head. Things are heating up in Israel. America just keeps on stabbing Israel in the back over and over again. Siding with the enemy. You know, they're playing both sides. And then we have what's going on in Russia right now. And it's all of this is about to lead to World War Three, And it's going to be nuclear. Things are very, very turbulent right now. And if you are sitting on the fence right now, you better get off that fence and you better decide who are you going to serve. You cannot serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. So choose whom today you are going to serve. And as for me, I'm going to serve the Lord. But I can't make that choice for you. No one can make that choice for you. It has to be a choice that you make. God will not force himself on you. You have to decide who are you going to serve. Are you in or are you out? There is no middle ground. Come to him as you are. You know, the beautiful thing about trusting in Christ is that you're not leaning on yourself. When you truly place your faith and trust in Jesus, you're knowing that you are not saved by your works. You are saved by the completed work that Jesus did on the cross through the shedding of his blood for the remission of your sins. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 tells us that if we believe just as the scriptures say that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that he was buried and on the third day he rose again, that's the that's how you get saved is by believing in what Jesus did quit leaning on yourself quit leaning on your own works do not be in love with this world this world is fixing to go into the tribulation but not before the church goes home you know my heart is so burdened and not for us who are found in Christ but for those who are going to be left behind you agree. Those who are going to be left behind the worst seven years in human history come to Jesus. Because the tribulation is about to start. All hell is about to break loose on this world. And you don't want to be here for that. It is going to be hell on earth. It's God's wrath poured out upon an unrepentant world. All seven years of it is God's wrath. All seven years of it. God is not going to let us go through that. Jesus is not going to let his bride go through that. A man who truly loves his bride is not going to allow her to be used and abused by others 
And then after they're finished, him decide to come and get her. No. He protects his bride. He cherishes his bride. And he takes her home with him. Jesus paid it all on the cross for us. God's wrath was poured out on him on the cross. So when you're found in Christ, you do not go through wrath. I can't say it enough. The things that are happening in this world are crazy. There was an assassination attempt upon the the prime minister of um, Slovakia, and they are not happy about it because he was speaking out against Ukraine and what's going on over there, saying that they were not going to send him any more money. And now he's in critical condition, I hear. Somebody tried to take him out because he spoke out about, about Ukraine. And the only two places I can think of that would do it would either be A, Ukraine, or B, America. And my, my bet is on America. There's something very, very nefarious going on there. And I'm not saying Russia is innocent. By any means. But that money is not being used for what they say they're being they're using it for. I just don't feel that. I could be wrong, but I just don't feel that's the case. This war has already been lost. And I, I am praying for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and, and in Russia. I can't even imagine the devastation they are going through. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. This world war that's coming, and it's coming very, very soon. Everything is pointing to this. They need this war. They need this war. It is going to be nuclear. It is not going to be pretty. Nobody wins a nuclear war. You know, that's, that's the second horse. Is the red horse. And that he who rides that horse is going to bring war. is going to bring war. Eyes on Jesus. Before the seals are opened, we go home. The Antichrist is that first seal. We will not be here for that time. Our redemption is drawing nigh, but while we're here, we need to pray and witness to the lost and we need to warn. We need to warn people about what is coming. If they refuse to listen, then so be it. But just as God told Ezekiel in Ezekiel 33, that if you see the enemy coming and you warn them, and they heed not that trumpet blast, then that's on their head. Their, their blood will be on their head. But if you see the enemy coming and you fail to warn the people and they do not escape their blood will be on your head if the Lord is telling you to speak to somebody you better speak to them time is too short and people's eternity is at stake their souls are at stake time to get out of your comfort zone believe me I'm out of mine I'm completely out of my comfort zone but I do it anyways. Quit being wishy-washy. Either you believe Jesus died for you or you don't. There is no middle ground. 
There is no gray area. Choose whom you will serve this day. And you better make that decision quick if you haven't. Quit relying on yourself, relying on your works. Your works are like filthy rags. Your righteousness is as filthy rags. When we come to Christ, we are covered by the righteousness of Jesus. And that's all God sees is his son. His son's precious blood that was poured out for us. <sighs> Wake up. We are not going back to times that were normal. Normal gets farther and farther away every single day. I don't even remember what normal looked like. What was that, four or five years ago? Four years ago? I don't even remember what it looks like. Hard times are headed for this world. Hard times. And if you don't know Jesus, you're going to be here to see him. And it's not going to be pretty. There are 21 judgments coming upon this world. On an unrepentant world who rejected Christ and his free gift of salvation. The church has got to be out of the way because the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation, is not meant for the church we are not appointed to wrath. The groom does not beat up his bride. Someone who truly loves their, their bride, a groom who truly loves his bride, who truly married her because he loves her, is not going to allow others to misuse and abuse his bride. His bride is his, and he protects her. And that's how we are protected, is by going home to heaven during that seven-year tribulation. You know, the attacks are getting worse. But keep your eyes focused on Jesus. So many are being attacked in various ways by the demonic, by family who, were, who aren't believers or by those who don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Then there are those who are going through health crises. Marriage crises. There are some that are grieving the loss of a family member. Many more are finding themselves evicted from their homes. Because they're not making enough money to pay their bills. And they have to make the hard choices. What do I do? Do I feed my family or do I pay my bills? The cost of living is going up. But people are not making enough to make, to make ends meet. It's all by design. It's time to wake up. This has been a very crazy, chaotic week. And I'm sure many of you feel that way. And I haven't quite felt myself, and I often feel this way sometimes, but when you feel that way, when you don't feel the presence of God, don't question your salvation. Walk continually with him and trust in his saving grace it's not by our works that we are saved even when you don't feel him keep going don't give up don't let go are you ready to go home. If that trumpet were to sound today, 
Would you be leaving or would you be staying? It's an honest question. And you don't have to say anything. You don't have to comment. Just, just reflect on it. Have you truly placed your faith and trust in Jesus? Knowing that he completed the work on the cross. It is finished. He paid it all. Not 99% and then you have to pay back 1%. No, he paid it all. You owe nothing. Salvation is a free gift from God so that no man can boast. It's not hard at all. You know, and the beautiful thing is you come as you are. Just as you are. You don't have to clean yourself up before you come to Jesus. Because the beautiful thing is after you get saved, there's a process that starts called sanctification. You're being sanctified right now if you're in Christ. And when you allow him to, he, he removes things from you. Things that you don't need. Things that you really don't need, he'll take from you. Now I've seen the portrait of King Charles today. And a lot of people are talking about it. And it, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't... There's something about it there that's just very eerie. And I'll show some pictures here in a second of it just to show you all what I'm talking about. It is very eerie. And of course, you know, they're saying that the monarch, you know, it's, you know, save the endangered species and then the the insignia on his insignia on his shirt is for um some kind of a, a an old portrait and then the color red is for the I think the guard, the red guard. But if you mirror the image there is a demonic face in the image. And I'll show that picture too. Nothing is what it seems. And the enemy hides things in plain sight. And I have another picture that I'm going to show. And it, this, this portrait is 8 feet 6 inches long. But anyways, the where I'm going with this is it's they talk about eight feet, um, eight feet wide, eight feet long, all of you know, eight feet tall, but it's eight point six something point six something point six 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 six. Come on. Really? The enemy is hiding in plain sight and people are just oblivious to it. People are completely oblivious to it. I could go on and on and on about things that the enemy has hidden in plain sight. People have been programmed by TV, by Hollywood, and they just follow whoever and they idolize these celebrities like they are they have god status and it's it's quite sickening really honestly and then you've got people professing to be christians but yet they act like the world and you got celebrities that are professing to be christians but there's no evidence there whatsoever And it's just sickening. And now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes there is a complete, not a complete, but sometimes there's instantaneous change when you are saved. And sometimes there's not. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes, you know, a new Christian, sometimes, you know, they got to they gotta walk through it. 
and the Lord will start taking things out of their lives that they don't need. Start convicting them of the way they're talking, of the way they're living, of what they're doing. And other times, the things that people have in their lives, he instantane instantaneously takes it from them. It doesn't happen that way for everyone, though. You know, we all struggle with something. I struggle with anger. I have a, I can have a foul temper sometimes. And I got to give it to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I did it again. I can't, I can't do this without you. I, I, I can't. I need your help. I, I don't like it when I act this way. I don't like it when I talk this way. When I get mad and angry and I want to yell. I don't like it. But I can't stop. I need your help. You know, the enemy wants nothing more than to beat us up when we do fall. When we do stumble. You know, that's when you get up, you dust yourself off, and you keep going with Jesus. Don't quit. Don't turn around and go the other way and say it's too hard. If you're trying within yourself, yeah, it's, it's too hard. That's why you lean on Jesus and you trust in his completed work on the cross. Quit relying on yourself. More now than ever, guys, we have got to be vigilant about what we're listening to, what we're watching, who we're watching. I have said this over and over again. If something feels off in your spirit, do not watch it, do not listen to it, do not play it, do not read it. If it's a church you're attending, or whatever the case may be, if it does not sit well with your spirit, you better listen. The Holy Spirit is telling you to stop. If he's telling you no, you better listen and heed. So much is happening right now. Don't wait. You know, my mom was telling me of some friends that they have back in Missouri. And um, their grandson was at church with them. And he got saved. And it wasn't long afterwards that the police came after him. And come to find out when he was 18 years old, he's 22 now, but when he was 18, he had murdered somebody. And he, he f confessed up to it and didn't fight. He said, yeah, I did it. You know, he owned up to it. Even though he was saved, he still had to pay the consequences for those actions that he had done. You know, a lot of times there are consequences for our actions. When we sin, there's consequences for that. Sometimes they're, they're miminal and other times they can have lasting effects on you. This young man, who's to say how long he might have to spend in jail? You know, he's been forgiven, but now he has to pay the consequences of his actions. There are consequences for our actions. We can't go around just doing what we want to do and not expect to not have to pay, pay up for it when, when it's found out. And even if it's not found out, you're going to be convicted by the Holy Spirit. You will be convicted until you say, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did this. I, I need your help. And it might not be anything major. Oh, guys. 
you know, so many are pushing that you have to be perfect. And the only way we're found perfect is through Jesus. Our, our flesh is not sealed. This flesh is still sinful. It's our spirits that are sealed. This flesh cannot enter into heaven. That's why it has to be transformed. It has to be glorified. Because no sin can enter into heaven. You know, God is so merciful. So merciful. <sighs> Don't give up even when you fall. Get back up and keep going. Jesus loves you so much. I don't think we can even comprehend how much he loves us. We have been given the unmerited favor of God through Jesus. We didn't earn it. We didn't do anything to earn it. You know, and... We get that unmerited favor from, through grace. God is full of grace. And praise Him that His mercies are new every day. If not, we would all be in trouble. Hell is coming. Life is about to be unbearable for those who are left behind. And you can still receive salvation, but it's going to be harder. And more than likely, you're going to give your life for it. But I would rather lose this life and gain eternity with Jesus than save my life and spend eternity in hell. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? You know, in the Antichrist, he's going to give a very tempting offer. And it's going to produce a lot of fear in people because they, they'll realize that if I don't accept this mark, then I can't feed my family. I can't work. I can't pay my bills. I can't pay my mortgage or my car payment. I can't take care of my family. And many people will give in to that fear because they know they won't think there's any other way but to take that mark. But if you take that mark, you are damning yourself to hell. You don't want that. You don't want to go to hell. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. Guys, time is short. This is why we're all feeling so weary because we are under so much pressure from the enemy. The battles just are endless. It's one after another after another. But don't give up. Don't you dare give up. Keep holding on because we are going home soon. Don't let the enemy tell you that we're not. Don't let other people steal your crown. So many are getting discouraged because they're being attacked and people are telling them there is no preacher of rapture. That they've been indoctrinated. Or they've been lied to. That they have misinterpreted the scriptures. And so many are down and out about that and exhausted just from the constant battles. Some people you just have to dust the dirt off your feet and walk on because you can't talk to them. They just want to argue. 
they want to argue, just walk away. Just walk away. Warn them and walk away. Share the gospel and walk away. That's all any of us can do. Please. Please heed these warnings. I can't stop. I won't stop. With God's grace and mercy and until he tells me it's time for me to lay this down. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to be here with you all to encourage you all. To pray with you all. To remind you that we have not been left. That God is not destined us for wrath. And that we are going home soon. Don't let anyone discourage you and make you feel like we're not going home. Because we are. Hold on to that blessed hope of Titus 2.13. And keep looking up because we are in the home stretch. I look for that trumpet to sound at any second now. And I can't wait. I know you can't either. And it's going to be great. Don't forget to post your prayer request in the comment section. If you have any, please feel free to email me. And I can pray with you. I can talk with you. Encourage you. Whatever you feel like you need. You know. And if you just want to tell us what's going on, all you got to say is, I have an unspoken prayer request. And God already knows. We don't have to know. What is going on? Because God already knows your need before you even speak it. But alright. I love you all. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Eyewitness accounts from around the world report that at approximately 5.50pm Greenwich Mean Time individuals from every country, including many children, were taken up into the sky. The exact cause of this phenomenon is still unclear, and political leaders have joined with experts in the fields of science and technology in a bid to identify the cause of the disappearances, the disappearances, the disappearances, the disappearances, the disappearances, the disappearances, the disappearances. Hello, I'm Pastor John Hagee, and I'm one of those who have vanished off the face of the earth. Yet I knew this event would take place, so I wanted to send this message to personally explain what has happened to you and to help you make the most important decision in your life. I know you're going through terror and confusion right now. Your nerves are frayed, and if someone you loved was among those who vanished, you're probably almost out of your mind. But if you will listen to me, there is hope. There are answers to all of your questions. Let me start by saying that if you did lose someone you love, do not weep for them. Rejoice for them. Because this very day, they're in the presence of the Lord that they love so dearly. That's right. No matter what other explanations you may have been given, the truth is that this event that you have just witnessed is something we Christians have called the rapture. And as true believers in the Bible and in Jesus Christ, we knew that this would happen. We've been taken home to live forever with our Heavenly Father. That is what's happened, and that is where all the people have gone. You ask, how could we have known that such a day would come? We knew because the Bible predicted this incredible event before it happened. 